Hi everyone, we're gonna talk about the five biggest mistakes people make with their retirement portfolio withdrawals. These mistakes happen all the time and they can be catastrophic. It's really, really important that we take an interest in how to distribute your income from your assets in retirement. So we're gonna talk about the five biggest mistakes, but also stay tuned to the end where I talk about the detailed steps to combat these big mistakes. Well, it won't be at the end, it'll be about halfway through this video. You can also check out the timestamps below and I wanna say thank you to everyone for all the support. Just lately with the new podcast and the most recent videos, we've been seeing a ton of traction on the YouTube channel, so I appreciate everybody. And do note, this is what I help clients with on a regular basis. This is one of my specialties, income distribution and retirement. So if you would like a more personalized and comprehensive planning and investing experience yourself, Click the link below. There's a scheduling link so you can set up a time with me directly. So enough with the nonsense. Let's get right into it. So the first mistake that people make is withdrawing way too much too early. You just retire from your job. You get to retirement. You're all excited. In your first couple of years, you spend way too much. It's really difficult to recover because once you get to retirement, you're not accumulating assets anymore. While you're working, you're mostly accumulating assets, investing in 401ks, investing in taxable accounts, building trust. But now the accumulation phase is over and now we're in a distribution phase. So we need to ask the question, how much should you withdraw? Well, the number is 4%. That's the blanket number that everyone likes to use just as a benchmark withdrawal rate for distribution strategies in retirement. That number was put into place by Bill Bangin's 4% rule. You can Google that. I'll hit a link below for Bill Bangin's research and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but do know the 4% rule is just the benchmark, but I don't really follow the 4% rule. But to help figure out what rules you should be using, you need to understand how income works in retirement. David Blanchett, a retirement researcher, a really intelligent person, a person a lot smarter than me, has come up with the retirement spending smile where essentially you can see here in this image that spending is big in the first few years but slowly decreases and then really catches up at the end and that's usually from healthcare expenses. So you really need to evaluate your withdrawal rate at the beginning so you're not overspending at the front. All right, the second biggest mistake is not pulling Social Security at the best times. A lot of people get too excited and they take Social Security early. If you take Social Security early, you lock in a reduced rate of reduced distribution amount. You want to make sure you're taking Social Security at the opportune time. In our examples later, we'll show you why, but it's really important that you evaluate Social Security because that's going to be a huge portion of your income in retirement. And the amount of Social Security you get affects your withdrawal rate, number one, so you're not overspending early. Number three is not accounting for gap years. So a lot of times people want to retire around 62, 63, 64, 65, but in number two, we discuss the importance of Social Security. You may not be getting Social Security until 67 or later. Those are gap years where you don't have any earned income or any earnings coming in or any Social Security. And so you have to withdraw from your retirement accounts or your trust accounts or your brokerage accounts or your assets overall. And so you have to withdraw more upfront. So it goes back to number one, don't withdraw too much too early. If you have gap years, you need to figure out a way to protect those gap years as much as you can. And sometimes that's getting another job, but we'll go over that here in a second. The fourth biggest mistake is not knowing your income number. You need to sit down and understand how much you're expending right now very precisely. Your expenditures are really important now, and then you need to look into the future and try to estimate what your expenses are gonna be. This number is gonna be very important here in a minute with our withdrawal rate calculations. So you need to have a good understanding of what you're gonna to need to spend in retirement. Don't miss out on that number. It affects everything and it's hard to recover from if you don't have it. And going back to number one, you spend a little bit too much early on. You see how one, two, three, and four kind of just flow together? And then number five is not having enough short-term funds available. A lot of times in clients are going to have to use their assets or investment accounts to help distribute their income. But what happens is those accounts are subject to market fluctuation, volatility, and sometimes that can be uncomfortable. And the worst thing you wanna do is have your asset drop and you have to distribute from depreciated assets to receive that income or that withdrawal rate number. So it's best to take buckets of money and set them in low risk with maybe some low earnings 
but they are safe and secure and you know that the market's not gonna be an effect on you making sure that you can distribute income for a few years and buy you some time. All right, so those are the five things. Now we're gonna talk about what you need to do. So for number one, you need to come up with a realistic withdrawal rate for your first year of retirement. Your withdrawal rate, and there's a really nice calculation for this, is your income need divided by your portfolio value. That's your withdrawal rate. So the 4% example that I used before, again, it's just an example. I don't even use that strategy, the 4% rule in my distribution strategies for my clients. I use more of a dynamic spending strategy. Make sure to subscribe because that video is going to be coming soon where I talk about that more specifically. But let's say you need $60,000 of income per year and you have a $1 million portfolio. That's 6%. 60,000 divided by 1 million is a 6% withdrawal rate, which historically that might be a little bit too high. And if it's too high, it's hard to recover from and it's most likely not gonna be sustainable for 30 years. So you need to come up with a realistic withdrawal rate utilizing that calculation that I just gave you. The amount of income you need divided by your asset amount is your withdrawal rate. So what you can do to help with that calculation is take the amount of money you need. Say you need $60,000, but you're going to be getting $30,000 from Social Security. Now the difference between those two numbers is $30,000. $30,000 divided by $1 million is only a 3% withdrawal rate. Now we're getting closer because that's the importance of Social Security. So for number two, you need a very detailed and date-driven Social Security strategy. I literally mean a date driven. We need to know when you're going to start taking Social Security and at what age. So we used the example before, but let's just try some new numbers. Let's say you and your spouse are going to receive 4,000 bucks a month between the two of you to age 67. That's $48,000 per year of Social Security income for you and your spouse. And let's say you're needing $80,000 a year of total income in your first year. That means there's a difference of 32,000 bucks. If you have that $1 million portfolio, we know your withdrawal rate is gonna be 3.2%, which some advisors believe that's closer to a realistic number, especially in the early years. Because in the early years, if we can calm down that spending, it's gonna help your money to last longer into retirement. Okay, so let's talk about the gap year. So we're gonna to try to step on number three, the gap year, and try to squish it. If you're retiring at 65, for example, and you know you're not getting Social Security till 67. There's two years in there where if we just use our previous example, I know we used a couple of examples, but let's just use the previous one of $80,000. That means you're gonna have to distribute $80,000 from your assets for two years. If you have a million dollars in a portfolio, that's an 8% withdrawal rate two years in a row. That's really difficult to come back from. So I don't wanna discourage you from retiring early or before Social Security age but I also don't want you to just start taking Social Security because it's available to you. These gap years, there's a few things you can do. You're not gonna love all these, but it's important that I disclose as many options as possible. One, you'll need to work longer. Stay at your job for an extra couple of years. I know you don't love that idea, but that might be what you'll have to do. Number two is save more in the years leading up to Social Security and retirement. What if we caught this 10 years earlier? What if you were in your 50s and you knew you wanted to retire at 65? What if we had 10 or 15 years where we could start to invest and save a little bit more for that future goals? That kind of cures everything we catch it early enough. It's like a disease. You catch it early enough, we maybe can get right on it and we can take care of it later. Number three is find another enjoyable job to work at. It's very simple, go work for two years. I just spoke to a client of mine that might go be a professor for a couple years change from their large corporate role they've had for decades into a professorial job where they can just earn a little bit of money and do something they enjoy. So that's a way to help with gap years. And then number four, the one I like the least, this is my least favorite option, is having to reduce your spending. So it could mean that I gotta come to you in your first couple of years, like, okay, you're retiring, that's great, you don't have to go to work, you're not investing, you're not saving as much, but let's just withdraw maybe 40,000 bucks. Let's make sure we can get your nominal basic living expenses taken care of, until we can get you that social security date that can help and let your assets grow a little bit longer. That's my least favorite, but that's an option. All right, number four is helping to protect that income number. So we spoke about needing your income number. So here's exactly what you need to do. You need to sit down now and you need to make a spending plan. Some people call it a budget. If budget hurts your feelings, you can call it a spending plan, but you need to sit down and you need to go down that list. Your housing expense, your total housing expenses, 
your discretionary expenses, your non-discretionary expenses, anything that has to be paid for now. And then what I want you to do is I want you to fast forward to retirement. Are those expenses going to be the same? That's what we need to find out. What's going to drop off? Included in those expenses are your tax bills, which is something I help my clients with, including reducing your savings because you're no longer, if you're working a corporate job, going to be contributing to say a 401k and you might not be investing in your taxable brokerage accounts anymore on like a monthly basis. So you need to sit down and you need to map out current versus future expenses. And then lastly, not having enough short-term funds available. One thing that you can help out with that is you should reallocate some of those funds into short-term buckets. Right now you can get a money market or a CD around four or 5% laddering out some bonds and some income strategies along the way. You can maybe even use an annuity. That's a good option too for some people, not for everybody, for some people. But utilizing some buckets of money that are earning a little bit to make sure that those assets are there regardless of what the market does could be a really valuable tool. I really hope this video was helpful. Again, if you want to learn more about what I do, go below. You can always set up a meeting with me. I help clients through this distribution strategy and preparing for retirement all the time. It's my specialty. It's what I do. Stay tuned for the next video. Make sure to subscribe so you get notifications, all the videos that are going to be coming out to help you prepare and plan for retirement. Oh, and the podcast comes out every Friday. We got a great guest coming out tomorrow and every Friday is going to be a new episode on YouTube and any of the podcast platforms you like the most. Thanks for watching.